Hey everybody and welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about how to get a better night's sleep. If you've ever survived a grueling educational program or a demanding internship, you know that the first thing to go is sleep. But the thing about these kinds of situations is that they end. Usually after it's all over you get some sort of big break at the end of term or summer vacation. These breaks give you time to rest and recover and generally feel better after you have worked yourself so hard. And then you go out and get a real job. You know, the kind that's not supposed to end. The kind that probably works you as hard as you did in those other venues, except that now you only get two weeks paid vacation, if that. Unless of course that job that you got is that you are a mom and there is no vacation and it turns out that actually going on vacation is more work than just staying at home. All of this to say that at some point in our adult lives we stop sleeping. Six hours or less a night becomes the norm. This is just life now. I'm fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. Right. The thing is though that we're not actually fine. Consistently sleeping less than five hours a night can cause a lot of problems like weight gain and stress that can even lead to type 2 diabetes, poor judgment, poor mental well being, and a four and a half times increased chance of having a heart attack. Guys, both Chernobyl and the Challenger explosion are linked to team members being chronically tired and overworked. Clearly, sleep is a big deal. So what can we do? Well, the first thing is to actually make enough time for rest. I'm about to give you six tips that will help you get a better night's sleep. But if you literally don't leave enough hours in the day, a hundred tips is not going to help. If you're struggling because you have so much to do and there aren't enough hours in the day, I totally get it. But what you need to remember is that an hour of work when you're well rested is worth like two to three hours when you're exhausted. By investing some of those not so great hours back into sleep, you will not only feel better, but you'll be more productive, you'll make better decisions, and you'll be more creative. So the first step to a better night's sleep is to work on your sleep environment. Melatonin is the chemical that our brains produce that makes us feel tired but that can only be made in the dark. So if you're spending time in the evening with all the lights on, or you're using your devices without some sort of blue blocking glasses, or by having the night shift turn on, then you're setting yourself up for failure. And even if your room is dark, if you live in the city or you have a street light, outside your window, that even can be messing with your sleep. So consider investing in some blackout curtains. You can get them on Amazon or places like Target or Walmart and they're relatively cheap. Now I get that blackout curtains aren't always the most attractive looking curtains, but what I have done in my daughter's room is to hang the blackout curtains on the sheer curtain rod and then hang her pretty curtains over top of them so that you get the blackout effect without the ugly look. The other thing to consider about your environment is the temperature. Generally, we tend to sleep better when our room is on the cool side. Of course, whatever that number is, is different for every person. My problem with this is that I hate getting up when it's cold out. So what I have done is to program our thermostat to crank up the heat to the normal temperature that we keep it during the day, a little bit before I would normally get out of bed in the morning. If you don't have a programmable thermostat, you might consider in investing in a small space heater that you could put next to your bed to turn on when your alarm goes off to help coax you out of bed in the morning. And if you don't ever have cold mornings where you live, please know that I am very, very jealous. Okay, number two is to keep regular hours. Your body does not know or care whether it is Wednesday night or Saturday night. Now that's not to say that you should not never stay out late whenever it is that we get to go back to staying out late or having a social life, but just try to keep as many days as consistent as possible. Go to sleep within the same half hour time range every night. So say between 10 and 10.30, for example. And if you need an extra hour of sleep and you have time, then go ahead and take an extra hour, just not four 
hours. All this does is mess you up more. It makes you more likely to stay up late again, which means you'll wanna sleep in again. And then when you finally do have to wrench yourself out of bed because you have an appointment or work, you're gonna be exhausted. Number three is to quit caffeine by the afternoon, preferably by lunchtime. I used to live for my four o'clock Dunkin' Donut runs. Nothing got me through an afternoon slump better than a massive iced latte. And I also happen to be a massive insomniac for all of the years that I did this. The thing is that I am a slow metabolizer. All of that caffeine would take ages to get out of my system. So while some people could actually drink a pot of coffee and then go right to bed, I'm over here laying in bed awake at 4 a.m. because I had coffee in the afternoon. However, the average person is somewhere in the middle of this and it takes about eight hours for them to get the caffeine out of their system. So take a look at what you want your bedtime to be and count back eight hours and make sure that you don't have caffeine past that time frame. But don't take this as a hard and fast rule because it could take you longer to metabolize the caffeine. If you back it up eight hours and that's not long enough, back it up up to 12 and see if that helps. The other thing to consider about caffeine is the dose. The average cup of black tea has 30 milligrams of caffeine, where the average cup of coffee has 95. Most caffeinated drinks have the amount of caffeine that they contain listed on the label. So take that in consideration before you chug that energy drink to get you through the afternoon slump. Speaking of afternoon slump, you might wanna try something different to get you through it besides caffeine. A power nap, a walk, meditation or deep breathing exercises are all things that can help you bring back your energy that won't have long lasting effects like caffeine does. This is good news because if you're able to fix your sleep, then you will probably also fix how bad that afternoon slump is. Number four is to get your exercise. Daily exercise can really improve your sleep. It's been shown that people that are sedentary who start getting 20 minutes three times a week, not only improve their sleep, but boost their daily energy and improve their productivity. But don't do rigorous exercise too close to bed because then that can actually backfire and keep you awake. Try to make sure that you finish your workout two to three hours before you plan on going to sleep. Number five is to reserve your bedroom for sleep. Your bedroom is not your office or your TV room or even your computer lab. Try to hold this space for sleep and other pleasurable activities. The reason is that location can trigger a habit. So if for example, you were to spend a lot of time worrying while you were in bed, you could create a habit of worrying while you're in bed. Then on nights when you don't even have anything to worry about, when you go to bed, you're gonna start worrying anyway. In fact, if you are struggling on a regular basis to sleep, don't just lay in bed and toss and turn. You can even start to create a habit of laying in bed, but not sleeping. Get up, go to another room, read or meditate or do other quiet, calming exercises. Nothing strenuous and try to avoid devices because again, they can destroy your melatonin, which will make you less tired. Number six is to find a routine. If you've ever had to care for an infant, then you have probably heard the term sleep hygiene. It's the thing that the doctor starts quizzing you about when you say that the baby is not sleeping. What's the routine like? Are the hours consistent, etc., etc. Now your bedroom routine doesn't need to look like bath, bottle, books, and bed, but it should be consistent. Basically, all a routine is, is habit stacking. You are using the end of one habit to be the cue to begin another habit. So for example, once I am done brushing my teeth, I start flossing. So if you have a solid nighttime routine, then as soon as it starts, your brain is going to start craving the rewards from it, which ultimately will end in the big reward of sleep. Things like reading, a warm, non-caffeinated drink, a bath or a shower, meditation or stretching are all good things that you could put in a nighttime routine. If you're struggling to come up with a good nighttime routine, <laughs> give up today. And if you're struggling for ideas for your nighttime routine, just search here on YouTube. 
There's about a bajillion videos on nighttime routines that can help inspire you. If you've tried all of these things and you've improved your sleep and you're getting enough hours, but you're still feeling tired all the time, check out my last video, which I will link up in the cards. Good sleep is a huge step in the direction of feeling better, but it is not always the only part of the equation. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. It helps me get this video in front of more people that need it. And before you leave, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications so you never miss a video. Thank you so very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Three of two. Uh, uh, the amount of caffeine it can uh, 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 programmable. Oh, that does not mix with toothpaste. Okay. Again, the night, the next, the, 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 the. if you don't have a programmable, wow programmable.